Hello there, this is Name. Welcome to another episode of Let's Create a 32-bit computer inside Minecraft. Last time we um, added a feature that we can read uh, an instruction from the program memory, um, specifically one of um, one of these here, that will simply take three register IDs as input and um, perform an operation on it and that's it. So the last two are the source registers, so input one, input two, and this is the ID of a register at which the result will be stored. And the end instruction has the ID nine and this is binary for nine, this is the bit for one, and this is the bit for eight. And here are the IDs for registers, and for these simple instructions, we don't need the rest actually here of the 32 bits, but I still want to keep all instructions 32 bits long, um, just to make things simpler, because otherwise we would have to deal with a variable length of instructions and then we also ha would have to change how we um, get to address inside this memory so we will just keep it like that and in this case ignore the rest and we wrote a function that will load the ID and depending on the ID get the rest of the bits in this case just for register IDs and now we want to combine these things so um, in CPU, um, how's that called? I will just call it control flow. Control flow of a program. And I don't know if there's a specific name like ALU. Um, and in here we will make um, <clears throat> a tick function and this tick function will um, load or fetch I think you would usually say the next or the current instruction and then call the corresponding um, command here and execute it. Um, and after that the address is um, modified I would say. Yes, okay. Um, so in here we will do function uh, program memory load instruction then we will um, should I do it in here? yes execute if score id of a command matches 9 run function CPU and and after that scoreboard players add address of the program memory 1 <coughs> here we will add more like these later right now we only have the end instruction and yeah after that we increment the program pointer so to say um, okay I don't know if I actually if I'm actually going to add more functions to this control flow subcomponent if not I will just put it in the upper no actually I have to put it in here. Okay, I don't think we will have more than 
one control flow related function here we will get actual instructions that deal with control for like a jump or conditional jump and stuff like that but yeah this is also outside of the private folder because this will be called by main later okay um yes and i think that's um intended behavior if we reach the end of the program memory it will still uh, increment the id and try to get the next instruction if this would be run again and then it would do nothing or run the first or the last command again but that's um that works as intended because every program should have a halt instruction which will end the cycle of fetching the next instruction and executing it. So we don't have to deal with that. Okay. Um, let's see. Reload. That's fine. So our input registers are 2 and 11 and output is in register 1. Let's see if it works. So we set the scoreboard, uh, set address of the program memory to the last memory cell and run function CPU tick. Okay, interesting result. Um, because we compared number two and 11, so that's 15, 14, 13, 12, 11. Okay. Um, Let's do this here and that should, we have to set it again because it got in incremented. Yes, it changes. So it actually compares these two registers using the AND instruction operator and stores the result here. And we haven't hard coded it by setting the um, scoreboard values manually. Instead we, um, uh, the, pro the computer is reading this thing here. So let's see what if I what if we run that again. The address is now one thousand twenty four. Okay, ID is now zero. Okay, now it will do nothing. Okay, that's good because. Um, ID zero will be um, will do nothing. <laughs> Not note name, but usually the instruction that does nothing is, I think, often called NOP. No instruction, or however that's called. Um, yeah. Okay, so now I would say we can add um, more instructions. Dum, dum. Okay. Um, inside the CPU. So we have AND and now let's copy that and get an OR instruction. In theory you can, um, I don't know, I think you only need two instructions, XOR and 
and or something like that and with that you can get all the rest if you combine them in the correct order but I want to um, add more such instructions just to see how they are implemented so the problem with or is um, we have to write two commands for each bit because of the way Minecraft commands work. So this is still the code for the end instruction. We look if both bits are white concrete and in that case we set white concrete. Otherwise the default is black. And now or means if at least one um, white concrete or one or true is found when we set white concrete one true however you want to call it um, so we do something like um, this we duplicate this and instead of chaining these together so if we have both if block um, in a row that means and and if we have um, separated like this that's an or in Minecraft command logic um, yeah and now we have to do that for all of the following okay um, unfortunately I couldn't find a proper package to handle these numbers here so I had to write them by hand uh anyways so this should give us an or instruction so yeah this input and output handling is the same um the or instruction has number 10 So let's see. Um, that's number ten, and for input we want or output we want register zero. Input is register one and two. So we will perform the OR instruction on these two and store result here and let's see. Set the address and run this thing. And this looks good. Mm -hmm. And if both are off, this will turn off as well. That looks good and now we let's see scope objectives the display sidebar program memory so if we set it to 1022 and run uh, the tick which will fetch the instruction run the or instruction and increment the address yes the address is incremented so now we will if we run this tick function again, we will execute the AND instruction like this. Okay. And again, here we can ignore the rest. And I don't know how long the episode actually is because I had to cut some stuff out. I think it's okay if we leave it uh, at that here because I'm kind of tired and I don't want to get this episode as crappy as the <laughs> previous one which I didn't actually publish um, and yeah anyways so that's it for this episode next time things should be a lot quicker and my plan is to implement um, exclusive or and then add subtract and so on actually these are, are a bit more complicated so and I don't know if I am actually going to do multiply and divide let's see so maybe the ID here will actually change hmm 
Anyways, <laughs> that's it for this episode. See you next time. Bye.